What is up, guys? Welcome to another episode of Maximilian Must Know. I'm really excited about this week's show because we're going to be talking about an absolutely incredible spring and summer fragrance from the house of Hermes in France. Now, Hermes is considered one of the A1 luxury fashion houses out there. They make a ton of coveted items, including for women, their Kelly and Birkin bags, which can cost up to 30 grand a piece. They also make exquisite scarves uh, for men. They're perhaps best known for their beautiful ties, handkerchiefs, and belts with the signature H, like this one that uh, that I have here. Uh, you probably have seen these uh, in rap videos and whatnot. I got this one from the uh, 57th Street uh, Boutique. And for the record, I was wearing these about six years ago before any rapper was rocking a Hermes belt. So just let the record show, and they're definitely not cheap. I think now they're like five or 600 bucks. I have a few other Hermes items, a keychain, uh, a couple other belts, a couple of ties, but I had never purchased one of their fragrances. And then when I started collecting, I did my research on the brand, and basically for men, they had a few classic fragrances like Orange Vert, Equipage, Bellamy, and Rock Bar. And those guys were sort of big in the 70s and 80s, and they had a little buzz in the 90s, but their fragrance line was sort of stale, and they needed an injection of energy and life of some sort, and enter the Jean-Claude Elena. Uh, period. Hermes wisely, very wisely, locked Elena to an exclusive deal with the house that I'm sure paid him a boatload of money. Prior to that deal, he was making fragrances for Frederick Ma's addition to Parfum. He also composed scents for Aqua de Parma, La Artisan, Cartier. He actually did a um, declaration for Cartier. And he started a company called The Different Company with his daughter, did some fragrances for that project, and I believe she is now handling creation for the for the different company. It's a very beautiful niche brand, sold at high-end boutiques like Aids de Venustis and Lucky Scent. So once Elena got to Hermes, he really worked on four uh, men's or unisex things. The first was their O line of lighter fragrances. He composed the grapefruit and rose fragrance, updated the orange ver fragrance, made a gentian fragrance. And uh, two, mo two more of those are actually coming out in June. I believe there's a Narcissus one the after the flower and a Mandarin one. Um, the second thing he worked on was a new men's fragrance called Terre de Hermes, which is a very, very popular fragrance. It's sort of an evolved, earthy, dirty citrus fragrance that you see glimpses of in one of the fragrances he did with Frederick Mall called Brigade Concentré. One of the signatures of Elena is sort of adding earthiness to citrus notes. And then the third thing he worked on... Uh, uh, is a high-end of Hermes fragrances, exclusive to the boutiques, and that is the Hermescence line. Those bottles go for about $250, and I would say the most popular ones of those is probably Vetiver Tonka, which I know my man Dan Mickers loves, and Amber Nargi, which I know my man Al from Street Sense loves. The fourth thing that Elena did, and what we're going to focus on today, is his Jardin line. Now, right now, Hermes has four different jardin or garden fragrances that all have different notes and characteristics of gardeners around the world. There's a Mediterranean one. There's one from the Nile. There's an After the Storm one. This one here is called On the Roof, Sur la Toit. And uh, in Paris, on the roof of the main Hermes building, there's a little garden. You can see it illustrated here on the bottle, obviously. And uh, Elena was inspired to make this particular jardin fragrance by that garden. So let's take a look at the box real quick. Uh, you know, nothing too, just very beautiful, uh, as all Hermes things are. And you can very clearly here see the, uh, the garden on the box. Um, and on the back, just a little, uh, you know, a little information that says, uh, With un jardin sur la toit, Hermes celebrates its deep uh, connection with contemporary craftsmanship and invites us to discover its garden, a little slice of nature and poetry shaped by man's hand. Secret. Hidden in the heart of the city, it stands at the top of the historical 24 Faubourg building in Paris, a hanging garden which surprises and fascinates. Wild grass is an apple tree, a magnolia, a perfume of light and delight is born, and others a feast for the senses and mind. That's basically your box. You've got uh, Hermes perfumes, you've got your batch coat, all the other information and whatnot, a little more illustration on each side. And then I really love this... Uh, this bottle. It's one of my favorites. Um, it's very heavy glass. It's beautiful. It's got the transparent cap and it, it starts off clear and fades down to this, um, to this beautiful green aqua color. It's got a very good strong atomizer as you can see. Uh, I'll give one more. You get a real nice, nice uh, wide line of fragrance. So it's going to 
definitely coat whatever you spray it at, so be a little careful with that, I would say. Um, so let's talk about prices for this guy. There are two sizes. There's a 50 ml and a 100 ml of this. If you get them in department stores or it's a four, you can expect to pay around 75 for the 50 ml and 125 for the 100 ml. So they are more on the expensive side of designer fragrances, probably because Hermes is such a high-end design house and because Elena is such a respected and master perfumer. But you can shop around online at discounted places and find this for a little bit cheaper. I paid 80 bucks for the 100 ml brand new bottle. Um, I, I'm personally not into buying testers because I like to have the boxing cap, but that's just me. And I think whatever works for you. If I did do videos and really wasn't into collecting, I would probably only have testers. So I sniffed out all the Jardin fragrances at Sephora, and I like this one the best. I would say they're not all that different, but there are little variations between all of them. Uh, all of them are meant to smell like gardens, just in different places, and they all certainly achieve that. My plan is to get a different one every spring, hopefully until I complete the set. Now I'm just going to, part of me, spray a little bit um, on my hand, so I just get a little bit of the um, essence, or a little bit of the spray while I do talk about it. Okay, now this one, Garden uh, on the Rooftop, is the newest in the Jardin line. It was composed by Elena in 2011, and that rooftop on the Hermes building was the complete inspiration for the fragrance. As we, we read on the box, there's an apple tree there, as well as some other fruits growing in vegetables and herbs. And what you get, I'm smelling it now. Wow, what you get in when you smell this fragrance is up top is definitely crisp apple notes, pears, roses, fresh blades of grass, um magnolias, basil. It's a blast of fresh greenness as soon as you spray this on. It immediately feels like spring in a bottle. As it dries down, you begin to get some of the compost notes. And I know that sounds unpleasant, but it's not at all. It actually just simmers down all that very loud and vibrant freshness and just puts a little bit of a lid on it. And I think that as it dries down, you pick up more of the apple and pear and less of the herb and grass. But the fruit is very dry, so it's never going to become cloying or headache inducing to you. Uh, it really just shows the mastery of Elena. The fact that this man can make Terre de Hermes and Veta Vertanka and this shows what a wide range of talent he has. Definitely a unisex fragrance, ideal for a man or woman, but this is definitely a warm weather scent. And for me, we'll go back into the closet as soon as autumn starts to creep in. It is powerful and longevity and projection is quite good. So I think three sprays, one in your neck and maybe one behind each ear is plenty. I had to think long and hard about what man I could see wearing this fragrance because it is a departure from those typical male scents and there is some serious risk for a gentleman to be wearing something so fruity and floral, but I could totally see Owen Wilson's character in Meet the Parents, Kevin, wearing this. There's a scene in which he describes the wood used in the house he built, and I can already see him explaining the story behind this fragrance and the rooftop garden in Paris and feeling comfortable enough with himself to wear this type of scent. This for me is a solid 8 out of 10. For the price you can get it at, it's incredible. A little upsetting that you can only wear it during warmer months. And personally, I know this is going to sound crazy, guys, but I would have preferred one of the standard Hermes uh, orange boxes that comes with the Hermesence line for this one. But I guess you they want you dropping the $250 to get that. And I will be getting one this fall. I have my first one planned out. And if you're an Elena fan, you should know that he has two books out about making perfumes. One is a sort of intro to who he is and some of her, his secrets and anecdotes. And the other is a little diary that he did while working at Hermes. So definitely check those out. You can cop them online or at the iBook store, either on your Kindle or Nook or whatever. But anyone who's a fan of fragrances should really have both of those books in their collection. This is very easy for me to recommend to women out there. A little bit tougher for my dudes out there. If you're at all uncomfortable with smelling floral or green, I would avoid this. What I love about this, though, is that normally you think of um, floral herbal fragrances. You think of really wispy light scents with low projection and longevity. Some Joe Malone fragrances, which my mother loves, are good examples of that. But Jardin breaks the mold here. This is fresh and crisp and heady, but it has some serious body to it. It's a complete 180 to the freshwater and aquatic scents that dominated the 1990s, yet it is still refreshing and clean, and I love that. I really, really love that. This is a very different uh, scent, and you know, when you smell new fragrances every day like us reviewers do, you do want ones that are going to be different and let you experience new combinations of notes. It's very easy to get bored with the mass-marketed fragrances and the flankers that are sold in Sephora. 
which is why I think so many reviewers love niche because they're bold enough and have the freedom to be out there and be different and put out products that the public decides if they like or not. Usually they're not beholden to a group of wearers or a board or people with no knowledge of good fragrances who will just buy what they see in Maxim magazine or on the shelves at Macy's. And Elena at Hermes is awesome because it sort of seems like he has the freedom to be bold and come up with unique and groundbreaking concepts. I heard he only has to answer to himself and the president of the company, which is awesome. Um, and you can see that with fragrances like Terre de Hermes and the Jardin line. Frederick Malm once said that most companies try to make perfume for millions of wearers and have you fit their fragrance. Well, Mal makes fragrances fit for you individually and gives you the choice of 15 things in a sort of bespoke, made-to-measure way. And the Hermes fragrances represent that idea. They haven't produced two or three fragrances and jammed them down the throats of millions of people. They've created 20 to 30 so that you can find the one that best suits you. And thankfully, this is one of those that you guys can get in Sephora that has the special, unique quality of standing on its own far away from the pack. It's very different and not safe. It's almost like an independent commercial fragrance, and those are great, and reviewers and enthusiasts love these because you can gain entry at an affordable level and still walk away with something exciting in advance. To create a fresh, vibrant fragrance that can be worn by men and women song gimmick or inoffensive citrus and aquatic notes is a spectacular achievement. And the future for Hermes looks pretty darn bright as long as Mr. Elena is steering the ship. Anyway, that is this week's episode of Maximilian Must Know. As you can see, this is a fragrance I recommend you go out there and get your nose on and decide for yourself whether it should or should not belong in your spring wardrobe. For women, I think it should. For men, I think you have to be a certain type of dude to wear it. But if you're that dude, it's definitely going to rock and it's definitely going to be something you want to wear. Um, coming up in future shows, just so you guys do know, we have, we're going to have a show on a very interesting Aftershave brand um, next week. The, the, one of the people at the... The company was nice enough to send me all the, the, the uh, scents that comes in, and I'm going to talk about those. And then in the future, in the, the spring, we're going to have reviews coming from Creed, uh, Penhaligon's, Tom Ford's Private Blend, Le Labo, Nasamato, Zerjoth, and Healy. So definitely stick around. I am just getting started. I promise you that. Man, I, I, I'm, nothing's stopping me from doing this. I'm going to keep going, and my collection is just getting bigger and bigger and bigger. I'm almost at 50 bottles now. I promise you I'll be at 120 by the end of the year, so stay tuned. I'm going to keep sharing all my opinions with you guys. One love to all my subscribers out there, everyone in the fragrance community, and everyone that loves fragrances. I love you all, too. I'll see you later next week. Have a great week. One.